Hi, I'm Lee Dixon with I Am Player for Gunnersphere. Our first question is, who had a bigger influence on your career, Wenger or Graham? I, I can't separate the two of them because they both had different uh, visions on the game. Um, I was kind of educated under George Graham in the art of defending and um, the back four that he put together sort of speaks for itself in as much as we were a unit and it was all down to him as well as the players obviously but it was all down to his building that team around a solid back four. So without that education and learning I don't think I would have gone on to be as successful under Arsenal as, as perhaps all four of us were. So and then to play for Arsenal, uh, for Arsene later on in my career was like a breath of fresh air. It was an amazing experience. And so to say one is ever any better than the other, I don't think you could, we could have had one without the other. So I'm um, very grateful that I'd had the opportunity to play for two great managers in, in George and Arsene. Would this current Arsenal side stand a chance against the Invincibles in a one-off 90-minute match? Well, I'll go one better than that. And, and I will say... <clears throat> that just bringing me into the equation again because I didn't play in the Invincibles or today's team so to make it poignant to me I think that the team of 98 when we won the double in 98 would have beat the Invincibles and would beat the team from today so that's my statement I just think that 98 team had a, a blend of everything it still had a, a, a reasonably tight base in the back four, playing together at arguably the peak or around their peak um, under Arsene Wenger, sort of 32, 33. We had the experience. We had the best goalkeeper in the country and Dave Seaman. And we had Patrick Vieira, Manu Petit in midfield, which that's the kind of strength and metal that they need today. Uh, Overmars on the left, Dennis Burkamp up front, with uh, with Nicholas and Elka, who was unstoppable in in his peak, and that was his peak ninety eight. So I think that team would give any the the Arsenal teams that I've seen in my lifetime as an Arsenal player and a uh, a pundit up until present day a run for their money. That's my opinion. Probably people don't agree, but well, that's what I think. For what it's worth, I agree with you. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so great. There we go. I'll, make, I'll sleep tonight. Yeah, then. good. I thought you would. I thought that would make you feel better. That, um, yeah, I reckon that Invincible... I probably shouldn't say this on an Arsenal blog. I reckon that Invincibles team, they weren't that good. Well, yeah, you say that. I think it was an <laughs> exceptional team. and But they had a philosophy that they would score more goals than they let in. And, and they, they were unbelievable going forward with Thierry Henry and, and the Dennis still playing in the... Uh, and all that. They were a brilliant team. But I still think over a you know a one-off game, I think that the '98 team had a little bit more steel, a little bit more um, defensive uh, solidity, and uh, with still people like Dennis Burkham, Over Mars, and Nicholas and Elker in the team, who, who and 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 Dennis, uh, sorry, Petit and and um, Vieira in front of the back four. I just think that team had everything. But again, I'm biased. <laughs> Right back uh, was a bit dodgy, but apart from that. <laughs> uh, I was trying to remember the right back of the Invincibles team. It was Lauren, wasn't Lauren, it? Lauren, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. It was great. We'll, we'll both sleep well tonight. Yeah. Um, going back slightly further to 1988 when you first joined Arsenal. Yeah. Did you have to do anything embarrassing when you first joined them? Were there any uh, changing room initiations or anything like that? No, not really. The biggest embarrassment I had when I signed, I had to go and train with the, with the players. Because I'd just signed from Stoke City, um, thought perhaps the manager had signed the wrong player and he didn't realise it was Lee Dixon he was signing, it was probably Kerry Dixon or somebody, and thought maybe I'd signed a bit, I was punching above my weight a little bit, that's what I thought. And um, So my first training session was at Highbury, it was in February, so it was winter, we were training indoors in the indoor gym and we had a circle, keep ball in circle and as soon as I came into the room the, the lads went, right, you're in the middle, got to chase a ball, I was, in, I was in there for about 20 minutes before I got it back and the quality on show, you know, there was David Rowcastle, bless him, and Michael Thomas and um, Kenny Sanson was still there, uh, Stevie Williams, all these players that I'd grown up watching, if you like, or seen at a distance playing in the first division as it was then. 
and thought, these are far too good for me to be playing with. So that was the biggest embarrassment, having to train with them and show them how bad I was. But uh, I lasted longer than I thought. Did you ever record a cup final song? There's loads of them, yeah. Quite a lot of them didn't make it to record or disc or whatever you call it. But yeah, we had a few wicked ones. Don't you remember? Um, oh, we, when we won in 89, we made a record called We're, We're Back, Back Where We Belong. We only had a minute and then we went and did it. Put the music to that. It was a classic. It got to about number 142, I think. <laughs> so there's about 10 Arsenal fans bought it. But... Did you ever wheel them out on the, on the stereo? Oh, home? yeah. On Sunday night? Every now and again. My wife's not very happy with that. But, you know, it's just got to go back. Nostalgia, it's a big thing. Have you ever considered doing your coaching badges? I've thought about it. Um, I've got a bit of a problem with that. Um, the process you have to go through to obtain your badges, um, which I probably cut my nose to spite my face. I've sort of reluctantly gone, I don't need to do that because I'm, I, you know, quite uh, probably arrogantly, if that's the right word, or head in the sand, think that why should I have to do a um, <clears throat> take a coaching badge to to know to to work out whether I understand the game or not, and I'm able to put that over to players. I'm a bit. I, know, I understand the process of trying to unify the the system of coaching in order to get some sort of policing of what the coaches have to go through to actually attain a badge. But I, I still believe there's a lot of rubbish taught in as in as much as um, you know you need this, you need that. I understand organisation skills can be improved by going on courses, but that should be left up to the individual if they want to improve. I'm a big believer if you are a good coach and you get a job at a club and you do well, whether you've got a badge or not, that is a sign that you can coach. If you've got a badge and you're not a very good coach and you get sacked, then just the fact that you've got a badge doesn't mean to say you're a good coach. So I think if you get an opportunity to coach, you should be allowed to at some level. Um, and if you're any good, you're, you're any good. But I do understand that they're trying to make the process more um, more easy to follow, where you, know, you can't just get a job if you fancy yourself as being a coach. I understand that, but I think a pro level, I think if you've played the game at a certain level for a certain amount of years, I think the French have got a system where you need so many points to actually attain a badge, and if you've played a certain amount of times at a certain level, that you get so many badge, so many points for that. So if you've played at international level, you get more points, and once you've attained a certain amount of points, you then get your badge, and so I think that's quite a good system. That was a long answer. <laughs> it's thorough. <laughs> Lee Dixon, thank you very much. My pleasure.